Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 16. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Now, while it says Bitcoin, this video is actually on the market capitalization of the entire cryptocurrency asset class. We talk about this series on the very first of every single month to provide an overview of the Bitcoin market cycle and the altcoin market cycle. As a whole, we combine them together. And the reason we don't give updates on this every single day is just to show you that sometimes the best solution is to take a step back and look at what's happening over the macro scale rather than concerning yourself what's going on on any given day, week, and even month. Okay. So that's the whole point of this series. And the reason we say the beauty of mathematics is that there's mathematics in everything, in nature, in the universe, obviously in the cryptoverse. And we wanna use this mathematics to our advantage to try to understand what's going on within the cryptocurrency asset class to try to identify major market cycle bottoms and major market cycle tops, as well as identifying local tops if they occur within a market cycle. So with that said, let's go ahead and jump in. Remember to subscribe if you're not yet subscribed so you can see these videos on the first of every month. So this is the white line showing us the total cryptocurrency market capitalization as a function of time. It looks very similar to the price of Bitcoin, but remember the price of Bitcoin has constituted a fairly large part of the cryptocurrency market capitalization up until up until somewhat recently where it has um, gone down a significant amount but especially early on it looks very similar to just what bitcoin has done currently the total cryptocurrency market capitalization is coming in at a very modest 2.07 trillion with the fair value logarithmic regression trend line showing a very humble 968 billion this represents a modest overvaluation of approximately 114%. Now, fortunately for us, while, while an overvaluation of 114% may sound like a lot, we would be looking at overvaluations much higher than that before we would be talking about potential market cycle tops. Now, there's been a lot of speculation over the last several months whether 64K was in fact the market cycle top, and I've been quite adamant all along that it's not and that it's a local top in a longer cycle and that we still have a ways to go. And we identified this a long time ago, right? We were talking about the idea of a double peak cycle back in, in January of, of 2021. I think we also speculated on, on it a little bit more dubiously in, in 2020. Now, if you look at this chart, you will see in fact that the trend angle decreases with time as we go into every single market cycle. So for instance, the first cycle had a steeper angle of attack if you are an aerospace engineer. The second one, it was not quite as steep. The third one, again, it's, it's coming down a little bit. The, the, the problem with say measuring the trend angles, which we do sometimes, and, 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 I, and I like to measure the trend angles, but, but some people then take those angles to the bank. And unfortunately, trend angles are very much important to the aspect ratio that you're using so, you know, to come up with, with, with angle, tr angle projections and whatnot is very dubious to say the least because of how, of how um, dependent it is on the aspect ratio of the chart that you're using. So just keep that in mind. But what you can see, no matter what, is that the trend angle is decreasing, the angle of attack is decreasing from one market cycle to another, and we've been speculating that the, the, the local high in the summer where Bitcoin went to $64,000 and then we saw the altcoin market capitalization go up as well, was that it was nothing more than a local top on our route to a market cycle top, okay? You can better identify these things by looking at the top logarithmic regression trend line in green at the top and showing that these are where we had market cycle peaks. I've drawn these lines from the bottom to the top to try to show you guys, you know, the, the angle of attack of these cycles from the bottom to the peak. 
but we've also identified the market cycle bottoms as well before we went on these on these long parabolic journeys you can see that the first one was relatively short the second one was a bit longer the third one was even longer and then the fourth one is is shaping up to even be be longer as well but of course this is one of those things that we will take one month at a time um, i've always speculated that the cycle will lengthen we will see in fact what happens in q4 and we will be flexible on that if we do go to what appears to be a market cycle top in q4 then of course we will identify that as it's happening so again make sure you subscribe if you're not subscribed now from here we've talked about local tops as well okay we've talked about local tops and you can see the one formed in 2013 and that at the time you may have assumed it was a market cycle top. Now, in reality, back in 2013, no one was really talking about market cycles. I mean, this was not this was a a, a, a concept that that wasn't really um, discussed back then because it's not like there was this obvious thing around what a market cycle would even be for Bitcoin because the asset class was relatively new. But in hindsight, you can imagine why someone may have thought that that move was a major top before having a relatively long bear market slash reaccumulation phase. But in fact, we were able to put in new all time highs approximately six months later, okay? And it ultimately led to a market cycle top later on that year. We speculated back in April and May that we were ahead of schedule. And I told people this back then that, hey guys, we are ahead of schedule we need to see the asset class calm down. We're likely gonna go into a summer lull. This is, this is essentially what we saw play out. And we had a 55% drop down to 28 to $29,000. And remember back then, back then a lot of people were calling for 300K Bitcoin by September or, or even sooner, right? Some people were calling for you know 200K by the summer. Some are calling for insane valuations. Um, but what's happened, in fact, is that we did have a summer lull and we had to you know, get through it, right? We, we really had to work to get through it. it. It took a long time. And now, as we head into Q4, we will figure out what's going to happen with Bitcoin. And again, we'll take it we'll one month at a time, right, with this chart. We'll take it one month at a time and we'll ultimately see where we go. Now, there's still people that are calling for, for very high valuations of Bitcoin as we head into Q4. Uh, by the end of the year, you know, still people are calling for 300K and whatnot. I would, I would still contend that these projections are, are somewhat high. Um, and I would be very surprised if we made it to those levels this market cycle. But, you know, we'll see, right? We'll see. We'll keep an open mind. And again, we'll take it, we'll take it one month at a time here. So from here, now that we had this summer lull in the market, we've come back down. We want to continue to trace what exactly is going on this market cycle. And I've drawn out here, you know, potential market cycle tops and what they would look like if we reached certain valuations at certain time frames. So for instance, the earlier we go up, I would speculate dubiously, in fact, that the total crypto market capitalization will end up being lower if we go up too quickly. That's not to say that Bitcoin can't make it to, to six figures. I fully believe that it will. It's just that it probably won't make it as high into the six figures if it goes up sooner rather than later. For instance, imagine, uh, you know, imagine we have an October where Bitcoin goes you know, to over $100,000. I, I don't think that's going to happen. But if it did, it would probably represent a, a, market, a market top coming sooner rather than later. Whereas if it takes us longer to build up to these levels, then we could probably fly a bit higher. As you can see, again, the green upper regression trend line is a monotonically increasing function. So the longer it takes us to reach it, the better, right? The, the better. I mean, as long as it takes us, it doesn't really matter because it is a monotonically increasing function. We would speculate that once we get to that green trend line, we are getting close to a market cycle top. Now, some people might say, right? Some people might say, well, you know, it's only, you know, we're only looking at three data points and they would be right, right? They'd be right. This is not something you can take to the bank, of course. But the point is, whenever we reach the upper regression trend line on the entire cryptocurrency asset class, the risk at the time will be a lot higher than it is today. 
It's not to say that we can't go above it. We could, right? We could do anything. It's just to say that if history is any indication, that has represented a market cycle top. So what we're looking at is just what's happened in the past. We're not trying to speculate um, exactly on the day things will occur. We're just trying to get it in the ballpark, okay? So that's generally the path I think we'll take. If it goes up sooner rather than later, which would be a, a Q4 2021 peak, then my speculation is that the entire asset class would not make it to a market capitalization of $10 trillion. If we're able to make it to a market cycle top later on, let's say in 2022, then I think it's more likely that we could make it to $10 trillion. If the cycle goes beyond that, then we could go above $10 trillion. So the whole point is to say the longer it takes, ultimately the higher we should be able to fly. I wanted to mention that we launched this NFT uh, yesterday as a way of, of sort of wrapping up September and, and showing that, you know, sometimes when you are in September and when you're in months where you have these red candles, you just have to sit back, play chess, you know, put the moon mission on, on hold for a little while. And there's nothing wrong with that, right? You know, we, we have to recognize that these things happen. So again, I know NFTs um, aren't necessarily everyone's cup of tea. But we did launch this NFT. If you want to, if you want to snag one, I'll, I'll leave a link down in the description below. Now, going to this chart, this represents the overvaluation of the entire asset class. Okay, and 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 I should say not just overvaluation. It can also just represent the undervaluation as well. It represents the valuation of the asset class with respect to the fair value longer than the regression trend line. And what you notice is we have three major market cycle peaks. And that this in 2013 was a local top and that we speculate that this one was also a local top. And one of the interesting things is if you go back and watch the video from last month, just a month ago, we had not had this final rollover. And now we have, right? And now we have. Now, you might be led to believe that it'll just go straight up and have a market cycle peak in November. Now, the reason I say November is because in 2013, this cycle actually peaked in November. A lot of people will say that it peaked in December, but if you go look at any chart, it actually peaked in November. My speculation is that the cycle will extend beyond that. You also have to take into account again, the angle of attack. If you look at the first leg of this cycle, it was fairly steep. And then the second leg actually matched it to some degree, right? The, 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 the slope of the first line is very similar to the slope of the second line. The slope of this line is not as steep as this one. So we might dubiously speculate that the slope of say a secondary leg might not be as steep as the one as we saw over here. If it were as steep as the second leg of this cycle, then we could go up and put in a market cycle peak by the end of the year. But if it represents say something like what we already saw earlier this year, then it seems like it's, it, it could very well extend beyond 2021. Okay, so this is the point and again, this is why we follow this chart every single month. So that no matter what happens in the cryptoverse, no matter what theories play out, we will, we will try to figure out what's happening at the time and, and, and know, okay, are we close to a market cycle top or do we have a lot, lot more wiggle room than, than others might, might make, you, make you believe. So again, so far, what we can say is that this is at least a local top, but I would still speculate that 64K is not a Bitcoin market cycle top. And I, you know, I always thought I was gonna, I was gonna be spending a long time you know, debating people between whether the, the peak was gonna come in, in September and whatnot. But it ends up, it ends up turning out that we've, we've spent most of the, of, of, of the second and third quarter just debating people on whether 64K was the market cycle top. And again, I, I know that it can seem like it is, and, and, it, and there's certainly a lot of reasons to, to maybe believe that it is. Um, but I, I would say that the evidence is more overwhelming in the favor of, of it not being the market cycle top. I mean, you could find evidence both ways if you look for it. If, you, if you're an unbiased observer and you look for evidence to say that it's, that it's either a market cycle top or not, you could either find it or not. But I would say if you compile all of the evidence, there, there's, there, there seems to be a better case to be made for the bulls um, than the bears, in my opinion. 
This is my my opinion, and it's based on on the trends that we that we follow. And one of the reasons we dubiously speculated that this cycle was following 2013 was you can see that it actually emulated that cycle relatively well early on. We had a capitulation here, the green dot, then back up. This was our 2019 run, back down, back up, a final capitulation, and then blast off. We've been following this on this channel for the last, what, 18 months or something? Um, well, what is this? This is part 16, so this is this is our 16th video. But if you're actually if you're actually um, <laughs> if you've actually watched this channel longer, we actually started the, these videos before we we officially called it part one. Uh, we talked about it for a few months, and then we actually made an unofficial series and called one part one. We've been talking about it for for close to two years now. These these similarities between these cycles, and and so now. As we as we go into you know as we go into Q4 and as we as we continue on into 2022, the question remains: Well, you know what will be in store for us? And hey, we're we're gonna follow this one step at a time. Right now, today, the market looks great, right? Bitcoin has already rallied. I, I mean, the last time I checked, it was at 47k. It could be higher than that now. I mean, it could be lower. I don't really know. I'm not looking at a chart. Um, but the point is, it doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter what happens in a given day. You more so want to look at what's what's happening on on the macro scale. So from here, we are you know we're still looking at a potential second leg to the cycle. I don't know exactly if, if this is the beginning of it or not. We've been trying to hold the twenty week for a long time. It seems like maybe now is the time we are we are finally bouncing off of it. So this is sort of the the area that we came back down to. You can also see that we came back down to the same overvaluation level back in twenty thirteen as we did this year. And we got a fairly nice bounce off of it. The move that we've experienced today is almost hardly able to be registered on this chart. You can see how insignificant it is. So again, I would agree that now that September's over, you it's okay to be woken up. We always said, wake, wake me up when September ends. I do not yet think it's time to get out of bed, however. These are some earlier videos. This is say like March of 2021. We were speculating that we would have a local top going into April and May. And then it would come down and then we would ultimately trend higher. We've been speculating on that for a while. So now that we're looking at this, we just need to see, okay, what's going to happen as we, as we continue to navigate crypto month by month? My speculation is ultimately we will see new all-time highs um, and, and that Bitcoin will end up proving that 64K was in fact not the market cycle top. And you can see here just how similar these phases are. So the whole speculation, right? The whole speculation behind all of this is that I do believe the entire cryptocurrency asset class will go to approximately $10 trillion by market capitalization. This is what I would speculate. I don't think it has to happen this year, but we will keep a close eye on it. If it happens this year, if we have a market cycle peak this year, then I would speculate it might not make it to a market cap of 10 trillion. It would be slightly less. If we go into 2022, I think it's certainly possible we make it to an entire market capitalization of 10 trillion. If it goes beyond that, then we could go higher. So I've said for, for years now on this channel that I would expect the market cycle peak, right, to be approximately $10 trillion plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder, what's a few trillion dollars among friends? Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.